grateful to Dr. Dua to invite me here. As I am told that uh, this institute is basically of uh, MCA and MBA degree holders. So I was told to focus my talk basically in the application areas. And uh, I'm working at the School of Electrical Engineering, Korea University, Seoul. Korea University is uh, a very famous university in Korea. It is uh, ranked number three in Korea, South Korea. And uh, most of its products are working at the top level in Samsung and LG. As you guys are very well aware of uh, those companies. So this place is actually the home of Samsung. They started their work from there and then now they are working around the world. So we have a very close collaboration with the Samsung and LG and uh, most of the work which we perform at Korea University is done in very close association with Samsung people or with LG people. So most of the softwares and hardware things which are completed in Korea University are transferred to Samsung. So this is my basic introduction, this is already told by the lady and uh, I have worked in different areas including the system on chip and uh, network on chip which is the upcoming area and I also worked in image processing and computer vision. So and uh, during my PhD and uh, graduate studies I studied uh, different types of softwares and uh, the different types of uh, operating systems which you can see here. So my basic area is actually VLSI design. As you know, in every computer or any machine which you use, we put one chip. So that chip is VLSI, the IC. So our main target is to design and make that type of chip. So if you look at the computers which we used in 80s and 90s, these were very simple. We were using one microprocessor, one memory and simple input output devices and one operating system was uh, developed by the software people. So that was the target. But if you look at 2011 and 2012, our simple computer system has been changed to a very complex one. I am sure most of you will be using your cell phones. So those cell phones are all system on chip applications which I will show you. So this revolution was started from Apple. The very simple chip 
very simple circuit which was the part of your computer is now become a complete system on chip that's why all those applications which were using or which were used by the people in different forms of machines is now incorporated into single system so my area is making those type of chips and developing some other applications so we call it system one chip and this is my introduction which is already done and uh, teaching and other things so i would like to go directly to system one chip so if you look at the history which i am starting that in 1980s and 90s our main focus was microprocessor plus memory so very simple pc in fact uh, these days we are using some complex pcs also which are using advanced architectures but until 2000 there was no major change in that area but if you look after 2000 we started making different types of applications on the single chip so if you look you can say computation communication consumer electronics content electronics convergence electronics different types of things incorporated so including dsp analog rf radio frequency devices everything on a single chip that's what we call system on chip so we call it system on chip era so time started somewhere in 1995 and now on we are moving for the further applications so if you look at the past then in 60s this was the picture 60s 70s or in fact in 80s we were using a television this type of phone all right and this was your recorder for listening music and then some calculator so these were the four different devices which we used to use in 70s and 80s also then time changed and the sizes of these devices were reduced using those chips so you can see lcd television a digital calculator then a mobile phone and apple ipod right this was the change in 90s so you can you can get all the things which were very big in size reduced to this very small size but that was not enough because still we were using four different devices to do all these functions so then came the revolution like this one is apple iphone many of you will be using this one so you can use all those applications which i have showed you earlier like television radio and music and everything on a single chip so we call this concept as a system on chip so there are two things which are very important first is the hardware so hardware part we design and fabricate and the software part is the operating system as many of you will be knowing that apple develops its own operating system and uh, other devices develop their own like uh, android or any other operating system which you use so this is the current situation we want this type of devices to be in everyday life but as you know that apple is very expensive so the companies like samsung they started making their own devices and the things were becoming cheaper and cheaper so now you can get a smartphone just for 6000 or 7000 rupees if you compare it in 2000 or in 1995 when we started using cell phone our cell phone which was very big in size and which was not able to do anything was more expensive than this one so it means that we need to produce new technologies and new devices to reduce the size further and making it more cheap so the target is to making the cheaper devices so this is one example where soc is used on a cell phone there are other applications also which i will include later but first of all i want to give you brief introduction about soc what is system on chip 
how it is possible to integrate all those things on a single chip that is the major concept. So, actually system on chip architecture integrates several heterogeneous components on a single chip. So, maybe you have heard the different names like uh, DSP the digital signal processor, microcontroller, microprocessor, image processor there are different types of processors which we call the core the IP core and then there are different other functions like analog to digital conversion then we need an embedded memory for that and then we need some other custom hardware. So, all these processors should be integrated on a single chip and they should be connected through some interconnection. So, we call it the communication structure or the interconnection network. So, all these components are connected through that interconnection fabric. So, this type of structure is known as the system on chip. So, increasingly powerful applications are possible and an efficient implementation require many low level details which we need to go through. So, this is the picture earlier we used to have a system on board integration. If you open your computer then you will found that there is a motherboard and then certain chips are there which we put on their allotted slots okay, and that is a complete system on board. Now, the current applications which we call the SOC. are the people you can find yourself a single it is not uh, confined to one branch of electronics or computers it is not confined to single branch of engineering or sciences there are different types of people there are people from areas who are working together to these applications cell phone or any of you are using any different types of apps are working to make that application possible. So, you can see here software, routers, protocols, switches and applications from then the software system and the system integration from the software people and so, this side information appliances, PDAs, games, humanities and art people are also included. Then electro optical like LCD, optical communication, storage devices, all these are the different areas. Then we have biomedical or bioinformatics or biochips, for that purpose we need biology people also. And uh, energy like batteries, cells and then communication like wireless and satellite all these are the different branches of science and technology who work together to make our silicon software part the design part and for hardware part we need mechanical people chemical people and of course sometimes civil engineers so as you can see when you are getting one cell phone in your hand that is the effort of the people from these different backgrounds so purpose of uh, showing you this slide is that if you are interested in this area then you can find something for you. There are, there are many vacancies at uh, the different uh, companies including Intel, IBM or uh, Motorola or Apple. So, they need the people from different areas to design their chips. Now, how this uh, SOC is designed? as you are the software people. So, maybe you know something about the software part. This is a very basic C program right. So, we start with the system specifications then uh, we partition it into different parts like DSP analog MCU microcontroller unit and analog and then we go to the design generation and finally, verification and the physical design. These are, this is a very crude introduction about the design. I do not want to go into details of this because 
it's very complicated. Uh, we start from the behavior, then we go to the architecture like hardware, software partitioning, then hardware, software co-design part and then we go for the RTL synthesis, capture and uh, floor planning, etc. And finally, we go for the function, performance and power. So, at the top is always software. Have you ever heard about uh, this type of design? Like, have you ever used uh, your uh, programming language to design any component? Actually, we use same type of uh, language, like you use C or C++. So, we use hardware description languages, which we call HDLs. So, those hardware description languages are similar to the C or C++. Then this is the very basic 32-bit embedded processor, which is uh, developed in the form of IP. So, its architecture design includes the instruction set architecture, then micro architecture and the module design and implementation includes micro architecture implementation, module and integrated verification and then associate IP design and includes the ED environment support, soft IP package and processor. So, all these things we do, that is a very simple example. And then you can see here we need instruction set architecture for designing one processor which can be used in our system on chip applications. So, we need the instruction set architecture for that purpose we need software tool chain. Then we need the micro architecture of that processor and module design and finally we implement it. So, same way we design all the IPs and then integrate all those IPs to make that system on chip. This is a very basic picture how we design each and every IP core and then integrate those. So, this is the basic idea of system on chip and uh, these are the research areas. So, maybe you have heard some of these like uh, embedded software development, maybe you have heard of these operating system like integrated developed environment, ID, instruction better than compilers, assemblers, all these things we need for system on chip as well. And then on this side we need test bench, in circuit emulator, evaluation board and embedded systems and applications. And here we need SOC integration, hardware software co-design, verifications and other parts. And this side is the basic electronics like circuit design, then algorithm implementation and other areas of basic electronics. So, where are the applications? I have shown you one application which is like a cell phone, Apple iPhone. There are other applications like the digital image and video applications. As you can see here, in all those devices, these days we use system on chip. So, that is why the size is reducing continuously. So, all those cell phones or all these things which you can see here including television or everything now reduced to the smaller size and lesser weight that is due to the system on chip. So, our target is from the home devices to the portable one. Everybody needs portable devices which are very light in weight and they consume very less power. They are battery operated and the battery backup is very high. And you can see here in some devices we need high performance and in portable devices we need low power. So, for all these applications we develop our SOCs. So, image, video codecs, IPs, embedded systems everywhere we use these system on chips. If, you, if I go into details of this digital image and video applications then we divide our area into three major sections. The first one is the image or the video processing. And second part is the image video analysis and third part is the computer vision. Computer vision is the last part. So, it is like uh, taking a picture, most of you are doing that, just taking a picture from your cell phone or from your uh, digital camera, right. But we the designer are concerned more than that. Our target is just to do the processing of that image. 
so first of all we do the pre processing then we do the post processing then we store the image and then we do the analysis on that image we call it an image analysis so first part is the processing second part is the analysis and then using that image for the vision computer vision so computer vision's main goal is to emulate the human vision including learning and being able to make inferences and take actions based on the visual inputs so your camera will be working as a human being it will be taking picture and then taking actions so very simple applications you can see in everyday life like opening a gate through a digital camera you are putting a digital camera or the video camera if it is seeing any car entering the house and it is sensing that this car belongs to this home by the number or any 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 detection system which you have installed on your device then it will open the gate automatically it's a very very simple application that is the application of computer vision and later on because it is the part of the artificial intelligence so it will be developing further complicated applications so where images or the videos will be used to take actions so there will be some surveillance cameras and the actions will be taking automatically in place of human being the computers will be taking actions so robots are using all those things so they are using digital cameras and the digital video cameras and taking actions whatever you want to do you just feel in your robot and it will be doing it so that is the computer vision so as i told you first of all we have to process so the picture is taken and before that we process so like what is the auto focusing before taking the picture we have to focus it so we will develop some application which will automatically focus on the target object and will take the picture same way like auto balancing there are different things in your image so we balance it and then after taking the picture we will process it we will save it and whatever type of processing we want to do digital or if you want to send it somewhere else whatever you want to do that will be in the part of the processing so analysis and finally we can use that picture or video for the computer vision so artificial intelligence so you can take action based on that one this is the picture showing you the intelligent processing so as you can see here in place of a human brain we are putting a computer for vision i already explained you computer vision same way for hearing we have developed the hearing aid right from which the person can hear and then for taste also we call it electronic tongue and same way electronic nose which are used to sense smell and the different types of human feelings can be used for this type of processing so the target is to make intelligent system all these things will be included to make a complete robot so computer vision is just one part of that as you can see taste smell touch and hearing are others so speech recognition is another area where lot of work is going on same way the lip reading that is also very important these days most of the police departments use that lip reading to read the mind or the language of the criminals so all these things are just part of our uh, associates and then after developing all those applications we have to put it on a single chip so that is one area then another area is like implantable biomedical applications this is the picture of a cardiac pacemaker which is of size of uh, 1.5 inch this much big and it is implanted somewhere here near your shoulder inside your body and its battery life is more than 10 years so if you have heart problem like in india that is the major problem if you have heart problem then this type of device is implanted inside your body and it's it is having two electrodes whenever it senses 
there is some problem in your heart so it, it will sense those signals and will deliver the drug automatically which is stored inside it so in case of emergency you don't need a doctor because this device is already implemented inside your body so this is another application which we call the implantable biomedical application this is a <laughs> cardiac pacemaker system this is the basic uh, outline of this type of device as you can see and but it is for the electronics people so using a very simple battery and battery power management then voltage current reference generator monolithic magnetic system adcs and different components and then it is put on a single chip and implanted inside your body so this type of applications are already there then other type of application which maybe you have heard or seen on television or in hollywood movies they always show that these type of uh, applications are used but actually they are not showing any graphics or anything virtual they are showing the real application sometimes which are already developed but we are not able to access those in india there were many other applications like this one like uh, a camera for the blind people it was developed few years ago so its function was like putting a camera and putting it here and that camera is taking pictures or videos and sending the signals directly to your brain so if you cannot see but your brain can sense because brain is functioning all the time so those video signals are going directly to the brain and based on that one a person can see he can sense that there is this thing so that is also a technology which is already developed and implemented in us so we use system on chip for that purpose also it, it's this type of device it's just for heart and that is for the vision then there are other applications i think there is no need to mention all of these but i will give you brief introduction of one future application which is known as the ambient intelligence we have heard about the artificial intelligence which is ai but here we call it ambient intelligence that relies on widespread network of embedded sensors controls and actuation nodes embedded in daily environment to enhance a number of daily activities our living environment so if you look at this picture so this is a very simple living room in us and you can see all these devices in this picture i just taken to show all those devices and applications so you can see the different gadgets different devices which are used in everyday life in a home and what should be the future just one device in place of all these so it's a collection of everything your air conditioner and uh, all these things like the sensors opening your door then um, moving everything switching on the lights fan air conditioner and different uh, things which we use inside our home those should be on a single device so we call it ambient intelligence so from the consumer electronics point of view the most striking change in the living room between the last century and the next will be disappearance of the entertainment boxes so like tv vcr dvd player and pc and the appearance of an ambience characterized by unobtrusive display and sound reproduction system so that surrounds the user in a simple manner but makes a profound difference